Hey guys, it's Rob. I'm making this video here to serve as sort of an appendix to a question I got asked about um, going into a little bit more detail about the point light and I'm more than happy to do that. I did kind of gloss over it. So hopefully this video will provide a little bit more clarity on that. So here I have the assembly model loaded. Um, there's no point light in it yet, but I'll go over the steps that I took in order to add the point light. So first thing I need to do is figure out where it's going to go. And the way that I did this was I went into my reference geometry and activated the point reference tool. And this is really nice because I can say, well, if I want it to be right in the middle here, then I can just select this arc and I'll just find the center and place a point there. And if I click on that point, you can see down on the status bar, it'll give me the coordinates X zero, Y three, Z zero. And I'll just make a mental note of that when I create the point light. So creating the point light, I'll go into the little beach ball tab here, the display manager. And here you'll find all the lights. So here's a folder. You might have to bump that open. But yeah, you can play around with some of these lights, turn them off, change your brightness. For example, if I turn this one, this light off in SolidWorks, you could see it got a little bit darker and the direction of this shadow changed. And if I turn them back on, it's different. And of course you can um, edit them by saying right click, edit directional light, and just play with some of the settings here. As far as adding the point light goes, I can right click on the lights folder and say add point light. And what it's going to do, give you this uh, property pane here and this little red preview dot, which is the supposed location of the new point light. You can see it is not in the correct place, but I can easily fix that by going into my coordinates. So remember it was X equals zero, Y equals three and Z zero. And you can see it puts it right where the point was. And unfortunately, I don't think that there's any way for it to update with the model, the model changed. So if I made this siren taller, I would have to go back into the point light and adjust it. But it's not too big of a deal since it's just one point light. But yeah, you can uh, play around with this. Um, biggest thing I play around with is brightness. And I just set that to one, which is the maximum. Hit OK. Oh, and I guess another useful setting keep light when scene changes. So that means, well, if you want to go over here and change it from three point faded to a backdrop, you can see that the other um, lights change, but the point light we added is still there. So if you want it to persist, uh, then you can do that. So as far as photo view 360 goes, I can go ahead and add this in. And you'll notice that it turned all of my lights off and we can verify this by going to the render tools and starting the integrated preview just to take a look. There you can see indeed the light is off, but that's easy to remedy. You just right click and you can say on in photo view 360 should re render it. And there you go. I will point out one more thing is that when you have photo view 360 on, and you go into this point light, remember it was just the simple settings, you know, specularity, ambient, and then brightness. But if you edit it now with PhotoView 360 added in, you'll see that it got a little bit more settings. So now you can actually set a particular parameter. So instead of just 0% brightness or 100% brightness, you could say, you know, 0.1 watts per square meter. And you can just play around with it until it is just like you want it to. You can see that just got a little bit more intense. At any rate, I hope this clears things up a little bit. And thank you so much for the questions. Please keep them coming. If I'm not clear on something, put a comment and I can answer those questions, be it in video or I'll respond to you. Thanks so much, guys.